Hey everyone, it's Natalia. Hey, this is Arun. How are you guys doing today? And today we're going to talk about what we packed on The Amazing Race the first time we went and also the second time, what we changed up. And so something that many people don't know is they actually don't give you a packing list. They give you a bunch of items that you can't bring, but they don't say like, here's like a checklist of things you should. So when we were preparing to pack, we actually watched a lot of the previous cast, like packing videos that were out there and that really helped us. So we wanted to do one too, just kind of share our experience and what we brought on the race. Because most of the people want to know exactly what to pack, warm weather, cold weather, if you're going to go to, to Tundra or somewhere, do we need to pack? Uh, winter clothing so basically we said we'll put together a video just explaining what we took yeah so some things you obviously can't bring with you on the race that they tell us they obviously any cash your credit card your phone they take any watches with like advanced like gps or navigational um they specifically call that out or any advanced calculators you can bring like a simple calculator but nothing like no ti-84s or anything not that that would probably even be helpful you but. can't bring any weapons <laughs> yeah obviously <laughs> things you can't fly with um any laptops any other electronic devices you can't bring phones and so these are kind of just the checklist of things that they say like for sure you can't bring the rest is up to you like do your research and figure out what you're going to need on the race. And also you can't bring any contraband too. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they, contraband. Do, they, they, do, they do tell yeah. you because that's something people might say, hey, I'll take some. <laughs> but they basically check everything. And once you get to the LA, they go through your bags. They even check your shoes. They literally strip you naked and test they the They don't strip you naked. <laughs> no, basically, they make sure that nothing, uh, you're not taking anything which is not allowed. None of that. Rest. No stripping of naked <laughs> happening. But yeah, even like you obviously can't bring in like a map of the world or even if some of the notebooks have like the countries listed or like flags and things like that. You would have to like rip out those pages basically if you're bringing even any notebook it has, it has to, be to be completely blank. blank and but when we did go back the second time they did say that if we had notes from the first time that um they reviewed our notebooks but we could keep those pages that we already had but that's an exception we i don't yeah. think the race will restart yeah. again <laughs> hopefully not so we're going to start off with what bags we took on the race and so i took a Gregory, it's the J28 um, bag, and I was going back and forth between an Osprey and a Gregory bag, but for me, this actually, I'm 5'2", and I found that Gregory bags actually fit my torso better, where the belt um, falls on my hips, fits a little better right here, and we wanted to make sure we got uh, backpacks with the kind of the belt support, just because when you're running, um, it'll take a lot of the weight off of your back. So that's one thing that we made sure. And I really like this one because it had a lot of different pockets. Like if we had to find things really quick on the race, it made it easy to like pull out something like where my notebook was. It has a lot of pockets in the front to kind of shove things. And then in the inside um, has like a little pocket here as well. And overall, it was, the bag itself wasn't too heavy. And we wanted to make sure like our total weight was around like 12 pounds. The first time when we went on the race, we packed too heavy. But sec second time when we went back after the COVID, we made sure that I, my bag was uh, had about 12 pounds. Uh, basically, you also yeah, had, had more or less the same I thing. had around 12. The first time we went, I think mine was 14 or 15. I think yours might have been like 18. No, because we, yeah. we didn't know. What, but once we learned what exactly goes on the race, we were able to bring it down to 12 pounds. I feel 12 pounds is also still heavy. So if you can take only one backpack, I would recommend it, but a lot of people, most of the teams take two backpacks. For me, I took the REI Trail uh, 40. Uh, most of the people go for the other branded names like what is the Osprey, Osprey or, or, yeah but for Gregory. me this was a better fit because I put it on put uh, about 20 pounds ran around REI I felt uh, this had a better fit so it's so important the back support and the belts fit properly right above the thing waist that, that's so important and as Natalia explained this holds a lot of stuff so this was very useful. I mean, this bag, I would recommend 
if you really want. And it was good funny because all the cameramen, you know, the cameramen oh. were carrying this bag. So you know it's a good bag when all the cameramen are using it. So a lot of times they, they thought I was part of the production because I had the REI bag. So if all the uh, cameramen and the race people carry, that means it's a good bag. I'm not promoting the brand, but that, I'm just telling you this was a good uh, b good backpack. Yeah, we did go to REI to get fitted because we wanted to make sure that we had properly sized um and had the right backpacks and they were really helpful when we went there because i had an osprey before like i was saying and that actually didn't fit me right so i wanted to make sure if we're going on the race that i had the right size especially like since i'm more petite i want to stress one thing backpack is so important which backpack you take because that's part of your uh, main, part of your body throughout the race, especially once you're running five, six miles, then you definitely want to have the right backpack. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what shoes we took. And we actually took one pair of shoes. I know past seasons people have lost their shoes. So there are other teams that did bring like two pairs initially or people that brought water shoes and flip flops. This was all we brought. <laughs> this is all we brought. <laughs> and so we both end up getting their trail runners, um, Hoka. And I think it really helped having the trail runners, especially for you when you were going up the mountain in the Santis in Switzerland. So since it was, it's an all-terrain thing, I didn't waste my time uh, getting the, sh the mountain shoes. I just ran with this, so I was actually able to make up one spot because when we came up up the mountain, everybody had to change into their regular shoes, whereas I, I was, I'd already changed, so I was able to make up one spot, so uh, this really helped me. I didn't believe in buying expensive shoes. <laughs> Natalia <laughs> said, Dad, you need to get, uh, this is one of the best uh, purchases I made, and it helped me on the race, uh, so thanks to you. Yeah, because you want to get something with good th th thread at the right. bottom because you want to make sure it's good in all terrains. And these really definitely had the traction. And um, they're extremely lightweight and so and also quick drying because a lot of times in the race you get into the water. So you want a shoe which dries quickly, which is going to be such a key in some of the legs. Yeah, so there's the difference between water resistant shoes and then waterproof shoes. And you actually want to avoid the waterproof shoes because they actually trap in more of your like sweat and the moisture, which they're good at keeping water out, but then they can get really like, like really like ugh, mm. inside. And even not all shoes are 100% waterproof. So even if a little bit water gets in, it's actually harder for it to dry out. So the water resistant shoes like these um, trail runners, these are the Hoka, they're the Challenger ATR fives. ATR5s. They actually dry very quickly. And so the, I think there was only one time we got them wet was when we were in, uh, was it Corsica? Yeah. No, I got this wet in the canyoneering. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you, I, yeah, you got it I, twice. Yeah, yeah, I got it yeah. wet. Yeah, and then in Corsica, when we were kayaking, we just went in the water with it. Like some teams did switch into water shoes, but we got these so soaked but they we were camping right after that and they dry pretty quickly we just like went in the water with this and was fine I, the only thing only other thing at time i think maybe having flip-flops would have been nice is when we were camping which wasn't necessarily on the race but like going on like the campgrounds and things like that was annoying constantly having to put these back on but i wouldn't i wouldn't take a flip-flop by you're adding extra weight every ounce counts so you want to minimize what you're going to take yeah. I think these are very easy to break in because we got them like before we went on the race, we only had like four weeks notice. So we didn't have a lot of time to like break in to actually like pack and prepare. And so these were very easy to break in using them. I think we you ran in them a lot before we went on the race. And then when we went back the second time, we took the same ones. A bit me. In spite of my age, I didn't have any issues with my legs. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get any strain or whatever it is. So these shoes definitely helped. Yeah, and if you see, I still have some paint on them. I got a lot of paint on them when we were doing the sardine <laughs> cans. Like, paint dropped all over them. Couldn't get it off. But, yeah, definitely recommend Hoka's. So, the next thing we're going to talk about is what clothes we took. And, like we had mentioned earlier, you actually have to get all your clothes approved before you go on. So, you they say try to avoid, like, any too much black clothing. 
Also, like, really bright prints or with, like, rather bright patterns don't really pick up that well on camera. Uh, and any no big logos, logos. Any logos which is bigger than a quarter, uh, you can have them. And then also, you want, don't want to be wearing the same uh, uh, outfit throughout the race, which you want, they want to see some color. But once you get on the race, you, you're not thinking about that. <laughs> and so yeah, our team colors, we've gotten this question. We actually, we get assigned our team colors. We happen to wear our Detroit Red versus uh, Detroit versus Everybody shirts during our audition. So I think they were really trying to get us the red color, which we ended up getting, which we were happy about because we were hoping for red. But to pack, we actually use these like, these kind of like packing sacks and we had like each of them um, labeled differently so we knew where things were. And it just really so, helps to make things organized. We basically rolled the, the, the pants like this and fit it in so you're able to fit three or four uh, pants in the thing. So it's, it's, it's good to identify, I mean, uh, label the pink because then when you're looking through your bags, you can pull out the right bag you want. Right. These really help just to keep us organized because we did have to like unpack and pack things like a bunch of times when we were in the hotels or when we got to um, start the race. So these really kind of helped us keep stay organized. This is just a recommendation. Some people carry it, some people don't, but this actually helps. Yeah. And these are waterproof too. So if you, if it's like raining or things or are wet. Or if you get your backpack in the water, <laughs> you drop it in the thing yeah. and then at least you have some uh, dry clothes. So for clothes, what we actually brought, I think I brought like a total of like four shirts, maybe two short sleeve, um, a long sleeve shirt, a tank top, and then a pair of shorts and like a long pair of pants. And then jackets, I actually brought, had brought two the first time. This one was more of like a lighter Rain raincoat coat. and it actually folds up like super small and super light. Uh, so this was barely took any space and was really light to put in. And then I also, the first time we went, it was like winter time. Uh, so I brought, this is like a thicker Ultrex kind of jacket that keeps you super warm. And I remember I wore this in Scotland and I'm very superstitious. So I actually did not wear it the second time we went on the race, just because we had gotten eliminated in Scotland. And I thought there was kind of bad vibes with this, but uh, it definitely kept us warm. This was a little bit thicker. We went, the second time we went back, it was actually warmer. So this lighter rain jacket actually was sufficient for a lot of the places we were in. The first time I, I took two jackets, but the second time I said, no, I don't need that. So I did take only one jacket, but I did take a thermal, um, the underlying, uh, what do you under, call it? Yeah, like whatever, the under armor, under armor yeah. thing. So that, that, that would keep me warm. So I would say that one jacket should be enough. Yeah, I mean, it depends on when you're filming, too, if you know you're going to be filming in, like, maybe colder time. But, again, again, you don't know what countries you're going to. We kind of had a feeling we were going to Europe. We kind of knew what the uh, climate was going to be like, so we knew we didn't need anything too heavy. And if you do go to really cool climates, they do provide you. They will you. provide you. Yeah. I, I, you don't need to carry those heavy winter jackets for sure, because that probably itself will be 8, 10 pounds. You want to keep your jackets till about two or three pounds is what what you would want to keep your jackets to yeah and even when you were in switzerland that was probably the coldest place i think we went but once you're back. racing half the time you take your jackets off because you get so warm yeah. uh, so you basically before the race starts you basically need the jacket because just to keep yourself warm uh, but otherwise once you start racing you're not thinking about whether it's cold hot <laughs> Yeah, because I think when we started, we were all bundled up. Like, when we initially started, like, London, because we were like, oh, it's going to be cold, it's nighttime. But we learned something. You look at how the cameramen are dressed. They know. And they were barely, they weren't wearing jackets or anything. So we learned from that. We're like, we're going to dress how the cameramen are dressing. So pay and, attention to what the yeah. camera people wear. Yeah. And that's what you want to wear, too. So for pants, and you really want to make sure you're taking, like, quick drying clothes. So a lot of, like, the athletic clothes... Um, because you want to make sure we were doing a lot of like sink laundry so like the second time around when we went like we didn't bring too many different like pairs of pants so we would just use the soap that was in the hotels and we would just wash them and like dry them before our next leg so you want to make sure you're bringing a lot of quick drying clothes I also had brought these like they're um ultrax they're like lightweight but they're really warm pants 
uh, which really kept me warm in some of those Switzerland legs. So I wore these. Uh, and it, we didn't go to any Muslim countries, but you also want to make sure that you're bringing pants that are a little bit looser and not all tight clothing just to be respectful for countries that m you might go to that may, might uh, have different religions and different cultures. The same thing with me. Uh, first time I took two pants, one which is really lightweight, which is probably two, uh, an ounce or mm -hmm. so, and this, I also took, this is the most important pant, I raced uh, most of my race, uh, it's an all-purpose, uh, the athletic pant, which is stretches and dries faster. So the second time I went, I basically raced with this and I also had the, uh, uh, the inner, uh, I, I don't know, what, what do you call this? They like, call that the compression, yeah, under compre yeah, underarm. Yeah pad and I wore the shorts over this so basically this this and this is what I the three things is and one t-shirt <laughs> is what I raced with that's all you need don't carry more than that because you can always wash uh, the, 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 the the quick driving shirt in, in in the night and this is all I ran with yeah and then I remember I after I raced some legs I just got rid of stuff like t-shirts and they, I just they were like really cheap t-shirts so I didn't feel bad leaving them um so like I'm like I'm not going to use this again I'm just going to leave in the hotel so there was a lot of weight that we were just getting rid of as we were going as well I forgot to we forgot to mention to sleep in we actually I just slept in my Detroit vs everybody shirt and I washed this a couple times it took a little longer to dry in the sink because it is cotton um so use this primarily to sleep with some just leggings that I brought it is really nice having like one comfy shirt that is not like athletic to wear in the hotel room when you're not racing and then when you're on the plane. So so just bringing like one like cotton comfy shirt as well. So we they did tell us before the race that like prepared you're going to go swimming. So we didn't know if we would need a swimsuit, but that's something we brought. I brought like a two piece swimsuit. Uh, and you brought just like I just shorts. brought a shorts which you could use it as a swimwear or you could just use it as a short in case you wanted to race around with it so multi-purpose uh, swim shoot swim suit it's shorts <laughs> and I think the only time we actually went in the water wasn't um, actually it was twice once when we were camping we went into the little lake and then uh, once after the grease leg, after like we did the sublaki and whatever, after the like ended, they let us go on the beach and into the water just for a couple of seconds. So those were the two times we but used our But for me, when I did the boulder ring, uh, I had to jump in. Whatever clothes I had is what I jumped in. I mean, even though they gave us a wetsuit, uh, but still your clothes got wet, but you don't think about it. That's why it's so important to have quick drying uh, uh, clothing. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so then like undergarments kind of things. I brought two sports bras and then just like, I think five or six pairs of underwear that were quick dry that you could do sink laundry again. The first time when we went, I think I had four or five pairs of underwears, but then the second time, I think I only ran with three. <laughs> no, lightweight, I mean, that's, it's so important. Everything adds up, every ounce adds up. So you think that I keep stressing about lightweight is because by the time when you pack everything, you realize you're on like 18 pounds. Then what am I going to take out? So that's so key that you buy the right uh, kind of, uh, um, whether it's an outfit, whether it's shoes, whether it's gloves, whatever you're taking, it has to be lightweight. Yeah. And for our and women practical. out here, you know, we got to bring some feminine products in case. And so, you know, you get to pack, I packed a little bit of pads and tampons. And I ended up getting rid of them and then actually getting my period, which kind of sucked because I was like, I don't need this. I'm going to reduce the couple ounces of weight and then I ended up needing it. So that's something, make sure you're packing women But you period. just want for the, 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 just one or two because the, the race will provide you if you need to. The, I'm the, sure they would have, I mean, but. The race, ha yeah. race carries all medication they carry. So you just need f for the moment, that, but then after that, you, the race can provide you with everything. So for socks, we probably brought like three or four different pairs and these were also washing in the sink. We got like the Smart Wool brand because they help keep your feet more dry. And these actually were pretty good at drying out pretty quickly as well. 
I mean, I, I don't think we need to take four pairs of socks. I would say two pairs should be more than enough because four is a lot of times you are not going to use it. So I would say two. You're always using it when you're racing. I, I understand, but you always, every night you wash it. So your two pairs should be, should be enough. I want to get a pair of gloves and you definitely want to have a hat and a cap uh, because cap you need it when it's sunny and hats definitely during winter times. Yeah, and I think the gloves can be helpful in other... I don't think I we think... use them to stay warm. Where we were kind of hoping to use them was I think when you were doing the rocks. The rock. But then for in order to go get the gloves, he would have to pause and I we had would have to go together and we didn't want to waste that time. I mean, some of the teams went and got the gloves, but I just managed without the gloves. But I think gloves you you pro probably want to carry a lightweight uh, um, all all purpose gloves so that in case you need to uh, carry something, it's it's going to be useful. But as you get later in the race, you probably want to throw some of the stuff away mm -hmm. because. Initially, as you get closer to the end, you just want to run with basic minimum. We brought two different types of hat. One was this like warm weather hat, and I wore this. It's a Neff beanie. I got some questions about what beanie I was wearing in Scotland. I don't think I brought this back the second time, but I did bring a kind of just a baseball hat. Um, I think this is like A6. Um, and I only, I didn't wear this while we were racing, but I did wear it while we were on the plane. And then we did bring some medicine in case, so like Pepto-Bismol, some Tylenol, um, and then the race does give you certain types of medicine that you might need going to different countries, so you carry that in your backpack as well, and they like brief you on that before you start. And the first time when we went, we literally carried everything, <laughs> like in all bulks, but then later we realized the race will provide you medication uh, at the pit stop or whenever you need, so just carry the basic uh, we did uh, uh, carry medication for stomach upset and we did carry medication for like headache or fever. Uh, just the basic necessary uh, medication. Yeah, but obviously like they're not getting you abundance of medication. They're not carrying all that. So like if you need, like if you know you're getting a lot of headaches and stuff, you need to carry that and have that in your race pack. And we also know that some of the other teams did carry is sleeping, not sleeping pills, the melatonin or whatever. Mm -hmm. So oh, which okay. helps you with the stress. So the, the, you can carry them. The one thing is you can carry any medication as long as it's approved. They will send, ask you, hey, what are your medication you're going to carry? And those are the only medication they will allow uh, on the race. If it's not approved, you cannot carry them. For a man, basically the toiletries I carried was all this. A shaving razor, the most important thing, the underarm deodorant. I had a toothbrush and a tongue cleaner and a little bit of a body lotion and a little bit of cologne. So basically that's all I carried, but what about you? I actually didn't carry much more and like, you know, there's been, I wasn't sharing a toothbrush with you, obviously, like hung and chi, like they shared a toothbrush, obviously we're not doing that. So, but I brought like a toothbrush, a little travel deodorant, um, for makeup, I did bring a little bit. It's like I had a little travel size like container. I just put some foundation in there and had like a wand of mascara. That's about it. And I did bring like a little contour thing that I ended up throwing out after the first leg. So it was very basic makeup. I wouldn't want to bring anything too heavy. Didn't bring any like I past contestants to bring like blow dryers, straighteners. Like did you I think some people. Lipstick? I I brought like chapstick, um, a little tinted chapstick. So that's what. But didn't bring anything else. Even my brush uh, was very small. I don't know if I have it. Oh, yeah. Here. <laughs> this is the brush I brought. So it's like a very small um, brush. Girls, if you, you want to be careful of the bristles because the first time it went, actually, the brush I brought, the bristles got all, like, squeezed and then it didn't really brush my hair. Uh, so I made sure that I got one with, like, a protective case the second time I went through. But just very mini brush as well. And a lot of hair ties. I, because, you know, I'm always losing hair ties. So I want to make sure I have a lot so of So I didn't carry shaving cream or um, soap because most of the hotels will give you soap. And I use the soap to as a shaving cream. So the less you carry, the better it is. Now we're going to talk about some miscellaneous items that we brought. Um, one thing is we did the first time bring a water bottle and it kept falling out of my backpack. And so I got rid of it right away. 
And they actually give you a lot of, like, water bottles before you start the leg. So we ended up just using those plastic water bottles uh, that they gave us. And yeah, the thing is, once the race starts, you, you cannot expect the production to give you water. So whatever water you need to, you need to, I mean, before the... Uh, before the race starts, they'll give you how much of a bottle of water we want, or you want some uh, sports drinks. They, they will provide you with everything. And also, after the race, after the pit stop, you can, they'll, they'll give you, don't carry, if you want to carry a cereal bar or something, a couple of them, that's fine. Don't carry, like in the first time, <laughs> we carry like 20 cereal bars, we had like all kinds of energy drinks. The, the race will provide you at every pit stop. So if you want to grab a couple of them extra for the next leg, you can do at the pit stop. So just carry maybe one or two cereal bars because sometimes it does come to use if it's a long leg. Yeah, you don't need like 15. Like we got the little mini like cliff bars. Like we were, we just had so much adrenaline while racing. We didn't eat any of it. So the second time we went back, we were like, we're not bringing any of these like things. You're not thinking about yeah. eating or drinking while you're racing because your mind doesn't even go there so don't waste your time carrying all that other miscellaneous items we brought um so we both have the same watch but the only difference is mm -hmm. i have a mini compass on my watch will tell you the direction so it was so useful for me to look at the, uh, the direction while i'm driving yeah i had a pocket compass that i had brought uh this is actually a male watch. I was looking for like uh, women watches and I couldn't find any that were really lightweight that had like just the basic compass on it. But this one was really nice because you can see it actually has like different time zones. So when we went to a different country, we were able to find the time zone easily. And then it has the electronic compass, which you are allowed to have on your watch. Uh, and so this is very useful and also has alarm that we use. So that's the one thing we didn't know before going in the race that actually watching past contestants uh their packing videos is to bring an alarm clock because it's true they do take out the alarm clocks in sometimes. all the hotel rooms yeah. most i mean the, 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 uh, for some reason the, because i don't know because it's part of the race that you have to get up on time so all the alarm yeah. clocks the telephone everything is taken away from the hotel rooms so we each had our own alarm clock that we brought um, and then sunglasses for sure <laughs> and for me, since I wear glasses, I had an extra pair of uh, glasses, the, ca the travel size, because if I lose my, or if my uh, main glass breaks, then I had a spare. Yeah, I also had brought this like little microfiber towel, never used it. No, Thought I don't. could, you know, maybe like wipe myself off somewhere, never use that. Don't, we <laughs> don't waste your time mm -hmm. carrying towels. We brought calculators. We never use these as well. We could have potentially. We didn't bring a counter. I know some people on past seasons that brought counters that that could be helpful. Um, we didn't end up needing it. We did bring headlamps. Uh, let me find the headlamp. Got it. Yeah, so we had uh, these little headlamps. We didn't use these on the race at all, but we did use it while we were camping because it got pitch dark. And we actually were camping in Corsica for two days. And so we were thankful, like in the tent, um, just when we were walking around the campgrounds that we had these. Um, we didn't really have too many night legs in Scotland and um, the one in London, but we didn't really need to break these out. I that. think the, the team should at least have one uh, headlamp so that they, because there's a lot of uh, seasons where you, they've had to use the headlamp. So I would recommend that uh, you carry at least one headlamp. Yeah, and this one that we got is like a black diamond um, headlamp and it's really bright. We tested it out before, so we each had one. And uh, so something unique to our seasons, we had masks. <laughs> and we brought our own personal masks, but they gave us masks at the beginning of each leg as well. So uh, we had those. Um, they were like the black masks you probably saw us wearing. And production will give you a team colors, the bandanas. Uh, actually, we used it a lot. Uh, I mean, I even mm -hmm. use it as my headgear sometimes. <laughs> but uh, this is how you identify your color of the team. So... It, it is useful. Sometimes you can use it as a towel, too. <laughs> and then uh, we got the notebooks. Very useful. So the first time we went, I only brought one notebook. The second time, I brought two. And so this one, um, it's like, a, I think, a moleskin notebook. 
it had all my detail notes. Um, so for each of the legs, like, was writing down just, like, who the greeters were, like, drawing out the flags, um, things like that. And so here, took very detailed notes for <laughs> the final challenge. <laughs> Uh, here, so I had everything um, in this notebook. The more detailed notes after each leg. Something people don't realize is they collect all your clues after the leg is done. So like right after you're on the mat and you come off, they collect all your clues. So if you want to write down any of those names, you have to do it while you're racing on the leg. And so that's the one thing is you like some of the things toward the end of the leg you might not have a chance to write down. So it's like right after you finish a leg and after they collect your clues, you're trying to kind of write down those details you might have. Forgotten and at the also, very end. It, it's important that both the uh, 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 that both the um, teammates. Yeah, I'm sorry. Teammates. Teammates uh, can write down notes because if one book gets lost, you will have the other. Notebook that I brought was more for just rough notes when getting directions because I wanted to keep my other notebook very like clean and tidy. Um, and this was just for like kind of chicken scratch notes um i didn't care if like we lost this or left this anywhere it's very lightweight it's just like a paper thing but this just i always had this out um when we were racing so i could write down any like notes for navigation like you guys have already seen in the past season it's so mm -hmm. important that you write down everything because the final leg most of the time is a memory challenge and mm -hmm. you need to know exactly what happened on the race yeah okay anything oh and then we did bring uh like goggles for some reason never use these i don't know if these would have came in handy at all but we didn't swim so didn't need to use these at all so just to recap good shoes good backpack maybe one pant and one shorts <laughs> maybe a little maybe a couple uh, two, two t-shirts uh two or three underwears two socks uh, need your sunglasses, a little bit of your toiletries, and don't carry anything else. I mean, it, it's just, you don't need the other stuff like the cereal bars, a lot of medication. They will provide you if you need it. Race, you want to keep everything on the top. Like if you think it's a warm weather and you want to pull your jacket, you want to keep the warm weather uh, jacket on the top so that you can easily pull out and you're not reaching all the way in the bottom. So the way you organize your backpack uh, for each leg uh, is also important. Yeah, and for me, like I would kind of like put my hair up so I'd have hair ties in here as well uh, and chapstick and then the, the compass. Um, I'd also keep in here easily accessible. And the fanny pack you want the same person to carry uh, whenever possible throughout the race because once you get used to it, it's easier for you to carry. Uh, if somebody is not used to it and then you suddenly add something on your waist, it, it, it feels uncomfortable. So that is what I would recommend. Yeah, but we did end up switching back and forth because sometimes, you know, if he's doing a challenge, he can't carry it. I just ended up mm. carrying it. So it's easier said than done. So hopefully this uh, video helps uh, uh, for the future races. We have tried to provide what we thought is useful and what has helped. The first time when we went, we had 18 or 18 pounds or something. We brought it down to 11 or 12 pounds. Uh, we decided that we would carry our own backpacks. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So it's left up to you guys. It's comfortable, feels good. And <laughs> this is what you race with. So hopefully this helps. Yeah, was there anything you that we didn't bring that you wish we did? Uh, I don't, earbuds? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think we would have brought anything that we did. Actually, we would have, we shouldn't have brought the stuff we brought. Yeah. So as the race got along, we basically had bare minimum. Yeah, barely anything. Uh, I, we probably even went down to like eight pounds at the end. There was a leg too where I said, should we just get rid of our backpacks? Um, that would probably have been stupid, but <laughs> no. But yeah. we we can still survive. Make. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, even let's say whatever you have on you, you can still survive in the race. So if you ever have to get rid of your backpacks, you will be fine. I mean, there were some seasons, their penalty for like non-eliminations, they took all their stuff and they some teams were fine. So but yeah, just let us know if you have any other questions about what we packed uh, and we'd be happy to answer them. Thanks. Bye till we see you again.